Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Support level on the chart as of more or less this morning and we're starting to see the market bounce, the bond market bounce. And the way it got here over the last four trading sessions is with some pretty big uh, price volatility. So we're seeing some gaps, we're seeing strong intraday swings in big volume. And all these things typically tip, tip the kind of hand to say, hey, this is uh, most likely a turning point. The bulls and bears are struggling and fighting each other here. And the fact that we are still in a long-term uptrend in bonds, it's at support, and all these uh, characteristics on the chart are popping up, we should start to see bonds rally, which means the equities market may fall into a little bit of a correction and out of favor for a little bit. So I like the bond market here. We could see other safe havens start to uh, outperform soon as well. The Fed said uh, it wasn't going to raise uh, interest rates probably for the next five years. But in reality, isn't it the international bond market that sets interest rates and the Fed doesn't have any control over that? Yeah, it's going to be really interesting how it, how it plays. I mean, I don't, it's really tough to, to see a huge rally in bonds here. I mean, you've got to wonder like how, how lower rates going to go. Um, if they continue to go higher, are we going to start to see negative rates? I mean, I just saw a report there last night that uh, someone was predicting uh, negative one and a quarter percent interest rates in the states uh, by pretty much this time next year. And it's, you know, the bond market's interesting. It's been in this like 30 year bull market and now it feels like it's getting a little frothy. Rates are almost zero. How much higher can bonds go? Is this bull market almost over with the dollar potentially starting to devalue and all the printing and the damage being done? I mean, it's going to be really interesting in the next few years. What the bond market does, it may not be a safe haven. It could actually be falling out of favor long term here if people don't want to carry and hold that debt and uh, and really make no money on it anyway. So it's going to be an interesting picture. I don't know where rates are going to go, but uh, I do think we're going to see bonds rally. Most likely rates are going to pull back. And um, it's just what kind of demand do we keep seeing in bonds? I know the last auction was terrible demand. And I think it could continue to get worse. So I think bonds could be nearing their last legs for really being kind of a safe haven uh, in the States. Now, of course, who's going to buy a negative interest bond? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. I, I, it's hard to wrap your head around it. So, I mean, I know the U.S. they're saying that they're not going to let it go negative, but... Uh, who knows? I mean, anything can happen, and uh, rules change, and uh, we'll we'll see. I mean, that, that's the that's the problem. If they start to go negative, I mean, you're not going to want to hold them um, at all. You're going to want to move to, you know, bonds could easily be replaced with precious metals, could be replaced with gold, and I think it already kind of has started. We're seeing bonds move down, metals move up, the currency's under pressure. So the the global the, the safe haven of bonds could totally be replaced with gold with what's going on i think we're in the infancy stage of gold potentially coming back and shining as a global kind of currency or asset or store of wealth uh so it's going to be very interesting the next three or four years what happens with um, bonds and precious metals and really uh, obviously everything that's kind of happening around the world this is uh, pretty unique times that is for sure well, if we have zero or negative interest rates, would banks to encourage people to still deposit with them say, okay, instead of uh, your deposit earning interest here, we'll give you so much gold if you put your money in and you'll have gold being held there? Or do you still think there will be a separation between precious metal stores and money storers? Yeah, that's a good question. I I can't see 
people trusting the banks to say, hey, we've got gold. I mean, all we hear are conspiracy theories that there's not enough gold even for the gold ETF and that, uh, you know, Fort Knox doesn't have all the metals that it's supposed to. And there's just, and the banking system's supposed to hold our money and keep it safe. And what do they do? They take it, they leverage it, they lose it. And then, you know, they let all the little guys kind of lose and America and the economy lose because they have to get funded back. So people don't really trust the system, the financial system. I think metals and their storage is going to be outside of the banking system because really the banking system seems to just be a bunch of uh, crooks, more or less. I mean, that's just the way it works. Or people who don't know how to run and manage businesses, you don't take somebody's money and leverage it uh, and lose it. <laughs> it's, so it's going to be interesting. And I think that's why metals are and gold has been the leader through all of this. I mean, it's been in a bull market since uh, for like 11 or 12 months already. And so people have been moving in. I'm a strong believer that, you know, I like silver a lot, but gold to me is still the global reserve safe haven when things get ugly. And that it's proving to still be that. Uh, silver may catch up, but, I mean, gold definitely more people are interested in buying gold because they know about it more than the average Joe knows about silver. So uh, I like gold a lot. I think bonds are going to do well over the next few weeks, but uh, longer term, I have my doubts with what the U.S. bond market is, how it's going to perform. I also saw an article where uh, junk bonds in the U.S., even for companies that plan to go bankrupt, were, were going crazy. Does that scare people away from bonds? Yeah, I, I mean, this whole market, I mean, everyone's on tilt and everyone's doing things, is shuffling their money around in such weird ways. It's a, it's just giant kind of panic and, and people don't understand what's going on and uh, it, it's just scary how much money people are throwing at stuff that make absolutely no sense. I mean, I guess there's, there's probably a counter argument to that. I mean, if the Fed is talking about um, buying up corporate debt to support these companies, obviously, you know, those companies are probably going to not have debt issues because they're going to get funded. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the high yield or the bond market, I mean, that's where you're going to get your highest yield, way better than the other bond market than treasury bonds. So I see why people are going there. But, I mean, you're still buying high-risk stuff and uh, – Right now, people are just looking for return on their capital, so they're they're moving wor- to their money to wherever that is. And they don't really, I don't think, think too much about the risk on the other side when this when things turn around. Uh, those are going to be the fastest to rise or the fastest to fall uh, in most cases. So it's going to be uh, a nerve wracking time if and when this. Mo- Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, do you think uh, market correction is around the corner? I do. I mean, I, I've been I've been one around the corner for for a few months here. We're not betting against it. Uh, we're kind of waiting for a sign of a reversal. Um, we're long uh, a couple different plays to the upside, and uh, the market most definitely frothy, very light volume, um, all kinds of mixed signals are flashing here. I mean, we're seeing um, the stock market rally while the VIX spikes, you know, 15 or 20 percent. We've seen this happen a few times over the last week. Uh, that hasn't happened since 1999, the tech bubble, uh, which is very, very interesting. And so we feel, I feel like we are, we're at that kind of euphoric bubble phase. And I think a lot of others do that this is just a big, uh, euphoric kind of sort of money moving in, a lot of new investors. Um, you, when you look at the put call ratio, people buying leverage options, they continue to buy call options hand over fist leveraging their account to the upside, expecting prices to just continue to go higher. This level, on average, based on the opening price of the total put-call ratio, is the same level we hit in 2020. The market fell 20%. The, the time before that it happened was in 2007, during just before the market topped uh, for a 57% correction in the stock market. So there's, a, there's some big, big warning signs out there, but we are in a bubble. Bubbles can, you never know how high and how far they're going to go and how long. So you really just kind of have to prepare that when things do roll over, you need to get out, protect yourself, gauge the correction. Is it a correction or is it the start of a drop? Once you can analyze that over a a few days or a couple of weeks, 
then you can figure out, okay, I'm going to get back into the stock market. That was a correction. Or I'm actually going to start to look to take advantage of falling prices because this is a, a new trend in a down direction. So we're really going to have to analyze when the next correction happens or a pullback happens, what is it, bullish or bearish, and then look at all the different asset classes, what they're doing and saying, and then we can get involved because I think there's some huge opportunity, more opportunity just around the corner, and uh, it's going to be pretty violent. Is the market likely to keep rising at least until November because the Fed is going to just throw everything they can in pre-election? Well, I do think it's going to continue to go higher. I mean, I still think there's another um, potentially 8 or 9% in the upside on the on the SP 500 and potentially the NASDAQ uh, still to the upside. I do think we're going to have some type of pullback, whether it's a two- or three-day pullback like we saw back in June where the market fell 10% over just a few days uh, and then continues to keep on going up to these higher targets. Or do we continue to slow grind higher and higher with no market correction? Uh, who knows how we're going to get there, but I do feel like a correction is going to come. And at this point, a pullback will still be a buying opportunity, but it will be it could be short-lived, and we really need to analyze when that pullback happens, what are the other asset classes doing, and how is the chart playing out? Because um, uh, we're, we're really close to what I think is a, a major market top uh, for long-term investors. We'll have more with Christopher Mullen right after this. Uh, March, uh, which is the 43.50 and 44 dollar per barrel level, uh, based on the continuous contract, and we've seen oil bumping its head on that since August 5th, and it keeps it, it's working its way, squeezing up under that level. I, it's been a point where I've been uh, telling subscribers that if if it can blow through this 43 and a half to 44 dollars. With a, I think it's going to be a kind of a big short squeeze. We're going to see a pop, and then I think we're going to see it reverse and collapse in price. I think it'll be a reversal sign to play the downside in crude. I think there's more downside potential here than upside for crude. Uh, looking forward, uh, you know, two or three weeks, depending on on when they can kind of have this exhaustion top. This, I think we're going to get a pop and drop type of play, uh, and then I think it's going to continue to go lower. So I like that play. It's a, Gold miners in, in the precious metal sector today are actually doing something a little similar to that where we saw gold miners uh, yesterday close right at a trend line resistance. They've been forming this beautiful bull flag, flagging out sideways. Yesterday they closed right at their trend line, and a lot of people were talking about it. And a breakout and a close above that level is very bullish. We could see another – we could see up to a 30% a thirty run in GDXJ, the gold – minor junior ETF. But I was telling subscribers this morning, we need to see how the opening bell and how today's price reacts because a lot of people piled into gold miners this morning seeing yesterday's close. There's a lot of people anticipating metals to move higher. And so the, the gold miners ETFs opened sharply higher this morning and it's been nothing but selling. They're, the GDX is down almost 2%. GDXJ down one6 It's putting in a reversal top, which is pointing to lower prices over the next three or four days. And it's that same type of pattern I'm actually looking for in crude oil. We're going to see some big gap to the upside or a huge rally one day, and then the next day we see a big reversal and a sell-off. So I think there's opportunities in both these sectors. We've just got to let them shake shake themselves out of it, give us the setup, and I think we could have a couple really good trade setups once we get confirmation of these new trades. Natural gas, does it really uh, run in a seasonal pattern, uh, goes up when we have hot weather in the summer, when people are running air conditioning, then you have the shoulder seas in the fall when it's not hot or cold, and then cold weather in the winter? Yeah, typically natural gas is, is seasonal. I mean, you can you can run seasonality charts on almost all asset classes, and you can find when they perform and underperform. And uh, I mean, we're coming we're coming into a time when uh, natural gas tends to firm up, it gets ready for winter. It's almost like everyone kind of front runs it. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff going on, as you and I discussed uh, before the show today, that could definitely benefit natural gas and create a lot more demand, which Hurricane Laura has closed down a lot of facilities, damaged. So there's going to be a shortage of natural gas. So it could, it could be more expensive temporarily. Uh, talking about 
uh, coal mines closing down, converting over to natural gas. Those will be huge users of natural gas. And and when I look at long-term charts and zoom way back to really 2007, 2005, we're huge cycles at play here. And they, they're slowly expanding and getting larger and larger in terms of how many years are between them. But we're on a, a four-year major cycle low that was put in and it looks like it's now started to the upside, meaning natural gas should be in favor for the next one to two years to the upside. And usually somewhere in there we see a huge spike in natural gas value, typically not for another year or so from now based on the past cycles. But natural gas is really interesting, and there could be this huge dynamic shift if the U.S. is moving from coal, closing down plants, moving to natural gas. It could be a massive user and could create some huge spike in in uh, natural gas uh, down the road when more things get online, and we'll see how that unfolds. But natural gas is really interesting, but it's extremely difficult to trade as a short-term trader because the ETFs are not designed for you to buy and hold them. They really value kind of like an option uh, every day, every week. Even if the commodity moves in your favor, you can still actually lose value. So natural gas is really interesting. Very tough to trade. Anything going on with Bitcoin? Uh, well, Bitcoin's had a little bit of a, a, a pop lately. We've, it's up 2.5% this morning or today, I guess. And uh, it, it's still holding up in its bullish formation. It broke out of that bull flag you and I talked about uh, about a month and a half ago. And the upside target for where it's headed is 14000 which is the high it hit back in uh, I think it was May or June of, of last year. And that's a 100% measured move based on the pattern we saw form this year. So there's still more upside. It's at 12100 today. So it has about $2,000 upside potential if it can continue to finish this pattern. So it looks good here. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how it performs when the stock market sells off because recently we've been seeing Bitcoin and sell off with the stock market. It, a lot of things seem to be linked to the stock market. But I, it may be turning a corner where it's becoming a safe haven because the dollar is finally losing uh, a lot of value and fairly quickly that people are starting, I think, to panic. And, and that's why we're seeing Bitcoin pick up speed here and hold its ground. Is people are trying to be defensive with their, their money and they're trying to find areas to put it. Bitcoin is one of them, but it's not something you want to put all your money in because there's still huge risk owning it potentially losing it, uh, all that stuff that comes with uh, cryptocurrencies. Chris, thank you so much for chatting with us.